Today is May 24th, 2020, and a lot has changed since I filmed this video. Now, we're not out of the woods yet with COVID-19, but we're seemingly heading in the right direction. Back in March, when I undertook this walk, it was a much scarier and uncertain time. Things were really escalating with the virus. Cases were rapidly expanding, countries were going into lockdown, the stock market was fluctuating wildly, and New York was quickly becoming the virus epicenter in the United States. With all this going on, I wanted to see how it was affecting Manhattan. I knew history was being written, so I wanted to go and undertake this walk. So it's an absolutely beautiful day here in New York City, but most people are not around to enjoy it because they're inside where they should be because we're in the midst of the coronavirus outbreak. But um, I'm gonna walk to Manhattan, a very long walk to Manhattan, and uh, see how the city has looked and changed and avoid people like the plague. So let's get started. My own neighborhood of Astoria, Queens looked different, but it was nothing like I was about to experience in Manhattan. I'm in Long Island City right now, about to cross the Queensboro Bridge to Manhattan. And uh, you know, there's definitely a lot of people here. Um, it's not dead by any means. And um, this is normally a busy intersection, it pretty much always is. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna cross the bridge, make it to Manhattan, and uh, we'll see how things are there. Now I definitely should have been wearing a mask, but like I said, it was a different time. Social distancing guidelines weren't as fleshed out. made it to Manhattan and uh, you know there's actually a lot more people on the bridge than I thought there'd be. It certainly makes sense though, I mean people are trying to avoid the subway and uh, last time I was on it was an absolute ghost train. So um, yeah, I mean it's, uh, I guess it's good, I mean people are keeping their distance, uh, getting exercise and they're still getting to where they need to go so I guess all good. One of the recent happenings was the shutdown of all in-dining services at restaurants, with a great deal of establishments closing completely as opposed to focusing only on takeout. As a food lover, this really pained me. So you see all the bikes there, since um, it's only takeout or delivery, those are all the delivery bikes. All right, some observations so far. There's definitely a lack of people on the sidewalk, at least compared to usual. It's not quite empty though, but uh, it's asking a lot for New York City. So I'm gonna go to uh, Grand Central right now. That's um, one of the big icons of the city. So wanna see how that looks in this time. I also have to go to the bathroom and they have bathrooms. Hearing that kind of makes me cringe. Um, since lockdown started, I've hardly used any public restrooms. And even in non-pandemic times, the bathrooms at Grand Central are not pretty. They're best used dressed in a full hazmat suit. So this is Park Avenue, normally a very crowded street, lots of office buildings, and it is a Wednesday in the middle of a work day, and there's just not a lot of people. Over 750,000 people pass through Grand Central on a typical weekday. It's always been an icon of the hustle and bustle of NYC. So this is Grand Central and it is eerily uncrowded. Normally this is just packed with commuters and tourists, but just a sparse amount of people in here today. So this is normally one of the most iconic views of Grand Central Terminal. And I uh, usually have to fight for this spot, but uh, not today. And it is uh, quite sparse here. So normally there's another view of uh, Grand Central from up there, but that's completely closed off. The Apple Store is closed too. This was when it really started to hit me. I was getting pretty sad. Felt like I was looking at the city I've always dreamed about living in on its deathbed. So I'm at the Grand Central Terminal Dining Hall. Normally this is uh, very crowded, always bustling. Hardly any people here. A lot of restaurants are closed. Some are hardly frequented. But uh, yeah, kind of sad. Uh, 
I did get coffee and a donut, so that's something. Normally this is uh, one of the most frequented entrances of Grand Central. And it's just practically vacant. So right now I'm in Bryant Park, one of the biggest tourist spots in Midtown. It's right near Grand Central and Times Square, so a lot of tourists. Just relaxing here with my coffee, and uh, yeah, it's pretty sparse too. But I mean, there are a lot of tables and chairs and you see people relaxing, enjoying the day, trying to make the best of the situation, keeping their distance though, just like me. So this is my Meyer lemon donut from the donut plant. Looks pretty good, pretty big. Makes me pretty happy. This will cheer me up. It was decent coffee and a good donut, and I did feel a little better, but still, I couldn't completely shake off the unease of the situation. Alright, so I'm about to head over to uh, Times Square, probably the most crowded and vibrant part of all of New York City. Normally it's a place I avoid because of that. So many tourists, so many people, very loud, and we're gonna see how it is today. A pretty empty street here. Not many people, not many cars. See, I just said a lot of people documenting the situation here. Things were really getting to me. As I got to Times Square, the Dow Jones just closed at under 20,000 for the first time in years. It seemed like I was bearing witness to the world's end. I was not only sad, I was getting scared. So there was a person that came up to me, asked if I could take a picture of them, which I of course said yes, I always do, but different times, I definitely regret that. And this person was posing and smiling, and I'm thinking, how could you possibly be happy at a time like this? After the photo, I at least sanitized the hell out of my hands. At Times Square right now, normally this is one of my least favorite spots in New York City because of all the people, and ironically, I don't like it today because there is not a lot of people here. It's, uh, it's sad. I mean, a lot of people are just uh, here to take pictures of the lack of people, which is um, quite a shame. I mean, it's still pretty, uh, you know, flashy, all the advertisements and such, though, but um, it's not the same, that's for sure. Alright, so that was Times Square, and I'm going to walk a bit north to uh, Central Park. We're going to see how it is up there. It was the same story. Closed restaurants and shops, empty streets and sidewalks. My despair was mounting. I made it to uh, Central Park, without a doubt, one of the greatest parks on the planet. Absolutely beautiful. So there's definitely people here, just not as much as usual. Um, you know, just like most of the places I've been to today. And, uh, you know, one encouraging sign is that there are leaves and flowers starting to bloom. I mean, this pandemic is really delaying or postponing a lot of things, but um, one thing you can't stop is Mother Nature, and that, that's uh, one of the good signs I've seen today. Can't stop beauty. As I walked around Central Park, it became a nice escape from the doom and gloom of the city. The blooming plants and flowers were encouraging signs. All right, so despite the lack of people, I mean, Central Park is still beautiful. It's still one of the best parks on earth. I mean, it is stunning and uh, spring, signs of spring are encouraging. 
Um, now I'm gonna start heading back home. I have a long walk ahead of me. Very productive today with the walking at least. Um, sun's starting to come back out, which is good. Getting a little more positive, feeling a little bit better. You know, you just gotta, times like this, when you can't control things, you just gotta look at the good things in life. And Central Park, nature, can't erase that. So back in Queens here, I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, I have mixed feelings about today. On one hand, it's pretty sad to see all these amazing spots in one of the world's greatest cities kind of empty. On the other hand, it's a great sign to see all these people taking the initiative of staying home, trying to stop the spread, and doing their part. And right now, there's no like um, quarantine order or a shelter at home sort of order. So I mean, people are doing this voluntarily. Companies are doing this businesses and everything we're all stepping up and that's what that's what makes this city and this country so great is that we're doing it we're dealing with it you know what this is only temporary and when this is all over well we're gonna all be better because of it that was a scary time and it's still scary but at least now it's better than it was a lot has changed since I filmed this but one thing that stayed the same are the people that make up this city it's gotta be tough to be a New Yorker. And being surrounded by their resiliency makes this city an incredible place to live in. No matter the situation, whether things are open or not, things may look a little different, but the spirit of New York is still alive and well. <laughs>